running into 7 p.m. now after making my picks uh, where we are Ricketts is coming on with his division Hill's uh, Fields's div uh, brigade will be available perhaps to come in starting next turn Union has a huge victory point gain, uh, advantage. It looks like they can probably hold most of the line, although they're going to be giving up a couple hexes, I'm sure. However, they might be suffering some heavy casualties as they're being kind of trapped in this. And they have a lot on here, which is pretty bad. Um, not sure how artillery counts in terms of the victory points. I probably should look at that. Yeah, well, each strength point is eliminated from that as the same as putting strength points on here. So those are worth victory points too. So you got to make sure to get your infantry off there and you got to kind of worry about the artillery. Now, as to the artillery, the Union artillery, now that they're on the defensive, just lit up the Confederates. You can see Forno over here, his units kind of wrecked in place there. Over here, this big artillery collection here, it's been knocked out and, you know, there's this tempting, hey, can I hold on a little longer, grab a couple more victory points. Uh, this hex is worth four, this one's probably worth two, but maybe four. Um, over here's worth two. Not going to be able to get any of these, that's pretty certain, unless Ricketts can, like, crush that line there. Uh, not that there's really a line, but, but yeah a lot of a lot of hits along along the line and the confederates weren't really able to bring their guns to bear they had to haul them up over the hill here or up to the top of the hill here so that they can start pounding into there um, they've got some worries they can't get too close <laughs> this unit uh that's a unit unit there there was a confederate unit over here that's this one got knocked back nothing got knocked off the map uh, so, I guess we're ready to start the chip pulls. It opened up pretty rough for the Confederacy with a fog of war taking Winder out this time. So we're down two of our uh, commanders. Winder is not really the best, but his replacement's worse. However, he uh, was not activated. I'm sorry. Um, Yule was activated and pushed Forno forward, knocking a couple of units. Uh, some artillery out of there, and this. I think sometimes I forget the artillery alone defending is just horrible, and I suspect I've forgotten to commit that four shifts in their favor. Maybe not. I may have just been banging up against here and not paying as much uh, attention as I should have been anyhow. Okay, uh, Get some initial movement up here. Doria coming in. Trimble coming over to cover for him. Buff doing a uh, quick march as well. Trimble just doing a, a march. <coughs> um, the rest of Ricketts' division I've decided to bring in up here, which means Trimble's covering that area against that possibility. He's still weaker than the forces that are coming down from that direction. So the, the Confederates may not be able to hold this. And I've got to send Trimble back up there. Somebody to go take that. Maybe I should have, but. Down here, Branch got an activation and kind of withdrew largely. Although he traded some shots and drove Prince back. Down here. And Thomas got an activation, but command confusion left him in place, so he couldn't capture this place after shooting his way out of there. He was stuck with a regroup. Confederate command confusion gave, kept Geary on the attack, and he's grabbed both these victory point hexes from it. Confederates are probably kind of worried about their choice. They actually had the choice there. Geary was trying to fall back. But we want to wreck this. We want to just destroy this as much as we can, get it in the box. Um, and I, we're, we're feeling like we're behind in points and due to be behind in points for a long time so by just crushing the Union uh, pocket here anyway 
Prince ends up getting an activation and actually throwing himself into the breach as well. It's vaguely connected here uh, with some support over here. So the Union will probably might well be able to hold on there for longer than you'd expect. Uh, other tactical games, a unit this badly used would have trouble uh, standing. But in this one, we'll see. <laughs> There's a lot of guns sitting right up here just pummeling into them if that comes around to that. I think that's about it. We had uh, all of Winder pretty much passed. His replacement's only a one. And I don't know if I mentioned, but Crawford's still standing back here. So, you know, the Union's trying to hold all the victory point hexes they had and still defend uh, and keep the Confederacy from taking the ones over here. Let's finish things up on a largely positive note. Banks probably should have held his final his commander in chief chit until after the confederates did something because we were in a pretty good place but i did a rally type action with it to help geary back here um, recovery whatever and then thomas took an action and slammed in here taking this victory hex and then i did a rebel yell centered on archer Talifiero, uh, no, I'm sorry, Talifiero here. Talifiero got pushed back, but the archer units took the other victory point hex, which means we're back down to four Union victory points. That's still a pretty hefty uh, total number of victory points that the Union's picked up, so I don't think the Confederates can easily make that up. And now we're in the end of turn phase where we shift all this crap down. Recover these, etc. There's a gun gone now. That's permanent. Um, and that just gets us as we're closing in on the end of the game. Oh, artillery was a little weird this time. Um, not a lot of damage. Maybe a little bit over here. These guys just unloaded on this, and then it looks a lot weaker than it was. Oh, so maybe a unit got pushed back there. I actually disintegrated. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think this is correct. I don't think I hit anything that hard. Yeah, but I remember sliding things down, so I must have. Um. So, what did we have? We pulled uh, Latimer and Terry up here. To give some support to Trimble's side of things. Uh, over here, the con Confederate guns got knocked off the hill. That's about it. I think I've got to give up these hexes. I don't think Prince uh, and honestly Augur's command has the staying power to stick there. The question is whether or not I get to move. And movement comes with withdrawal fire, and that kind of sucks. Otherwise, we're ready to rock into this turn fully. And now we're getting the full Ricketts command coming in from up here, which may cause the Confederates some serious problems. I'm going to start with a bunch of event shits being pulled, just because they're all in the cup, and they stay out when they get pulled. <clears throat> There's, you know, a good mix in terms of leaders and events, but towards the end of the turn, chances are most of the events have already been pulled out. So I went through a long series of those, actually. Um... And speaking of which, what I'm noticing, some of the counters, they get a little bit of wear on them. It's hard to notice, but I suspect that for a chip pull game especially, this is a problem. Um, but that these counters are going to rub off a little worse than you're used to from some companies, perhaps. I know that I had this issue with uh, some earlier games. For example, Victory Games is Civil War. Uh, some of my counters are pretty badly worn and these again it, the glossy texture is always a bad idea uh, when at least with the older ones I've noticed newer games maybe don't seem to have that much of a problem with the gloss texture maybe they do maybe I just haven't worn them out like I played that but this is uh, this is wearing at a ridiculously fast rate and I suspect you're not going to get a lot of playings out of this game 
even if you really, really like it, uh, you'll wear out the counters to the point where uh, some of them may start becoming un unusable. You know, I will get as many playing. I mean, I'm not going to wear the counters out. I'll play the game probably five or six times in my lifetime. You know, uh, just trying to estimate based on the size of my collection and very, <laughs> very optimistic thoughts about how, how how much longer I have to live and how much I'll be gaming, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, we had, let's see, we had a few activations here. Um, Trimble didn't do much. Uh, but Forno ended things up with a charge here that drove these guys out. He didn't take, manage to take this gun out, though. I'm not sure why. I think I forgot to roll for it. So I'll have to get to that. Let me just do that, because he was the last activation here. So, I don't... Yeah, he was going... He was going for this gun. Yeah, because I, I took care of this attack. Uh, the problem is I'm actually facing both of these guns, so I have like a 13 uh, with two shifts, I think. This is not good. So it's very likely I'll get broken up by that. And that's, uh, I've got a four quality unit, so I'm getting a green check. And that's not good. I get disordered. A morale hit and a retreat too. Um, but these guys did push forward even with the supporting artillery here. Uh, elsewhere, I think we had some failed actions. The Union threw a rebel fatigue chit into play coming down here, but uh, Garnett, although he didn't have an activation that was successful, did manage to shoot the uh, Union out of here. Sequence of activations down here on Winder, I think that finished his command up. Uh, Crawford got chased out through a, a fog of war, uncontrolled Union withdrawal. Geary managed to pull back. Uh, I was feeling very uncomfortable with Prince here. I got lucky with Pender. I was able to do a command confusion because he could have sliced across and done some damage. But there are a lot of Confederate Unions. Units, I don't have much to defend myself. So what I took was, <clears throat> well, probably the wrong thing. I used my uh, Banks command. I think I could have used the Brigade Reserve movement. You can't move adjacent to things. It doesn't feel like reserve to me to withdraw, but anyway, um, I used the Banks move to pull Prince out. That got canceled with a command confusion though, but I still got a maneuver. So I was able to pull out, took some fire. Uh, however, the Union line is looking a lot stronger. If I don't knock it over, uh, especially with Harnoff coming down here. He attempted an assault here and got driven back. So it's not as potent a position as it could be, although another uh, attack opportunity could come from the north and hit Trimble. At least from this hex, I can't really get anywhere else. Unless I use the quick march. I'm scared to use it, but you know, it's only one one uh, regiment that gets reduced. Which it's used, you can tell we're coming towards the end of the, the tail end of the turn. Uh, tower came in this way. Duria made a strike forward. Mainly, the Confederate units here have been trying to uh, reorganize. You can see Branch early, not Thomas. Uh, managed to succeed. Archer is still available. He'll get a shot. Uh, he's got some damaged units that I probably do want to try to recover. There isn't really a lot to do except launch myself against that Union line. The one worry I uh, kind of have is the Union maybe trying to grab some victory points at this point, but otherwise I kind of have a little bit of time, eh, not much, but a little bit of time to advance and try to take some more spaces. I don't think these are going to be available. I just don't think I'm going to be able to get to them. Um, Forno may be able to get here. Trimble probably doesn't have the power to hit here, so there's just not really a lot of room left in the game for me to launch one more big major assault 
and actually gain any of these victory point hexes, and that's going to be problematic. <sighs> so, I have to dispatch somebody to get this thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's where our position is right right now. It looks like uh, it looks like the Confederates are going to have a real real tough time meet, uh, matching the huge amount of points that the Union's already scored, and the Union you know, might get an opportunity to get in here or something. I don't think there's anything left. Uh, the kind of random options are pretty much out of the way at this point. So I'm probably done collecting victory points for the Union. Okay, let's see, we finish uh, the turn up with a little bit of maneuvering up here, tower. Some inconsequential stuff like failed rallies here for Prince and Geary. Augur is so crappy right now. And two rebel yells out a forno, which drove, I don't know, uh, drove this gun back. He hit it the same gun twice, but he ended up throwing his fresh big unit into the uh, broken box through it somehow. Or no, this was a different unit. The fresh big unit's over here damaged. Same effect though, basically. Something that was in perfectly fine shape is now off. Push these forward and gonna roll for I don't know who that is. Fields, my eyes are so questionable. He's not coming in. This is moving forward. And we got chits and stuff to throw in place. But you know, I mean this looks threatening and dangerous, but unless Thomas, who's now a weaker commander, uh, can get his forces to really put some heavy pressure here it, and, and there's just not enough time um, I think the Union has this pretty well sewed up especially with Tower slipping around behind Trimble um, Trimble's gonna have to probably fall back and try to take this location no way big counters cause problems for me no way he's gonna you know be able to Push the side Ricketts Hall division this this uh this game. Had a lot of close in work. Uh, the artillery didn't do a whole hell of a lot here. Uh, Confederates brought some guns into place where they can uh, have some effect on the Union now. They were kinda hidden behind. And I'm just trying to make sure they've caught all the guns. Um a little bit of closer in fire up here. Some of these guys, the cornfield I think was blocking just because they were at the same elevation. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, we had a little bit of fire, a little bit of movement. Cav moved up here. Uh, some longer range fire here because I couldn't hit these guys. So there's blocking cornfields here. Uh, getting used to the terrain in this. Uh, a lot of the systems in this require a little bit of getting used to. And I think that impacts my, my feel for the game. You know, I'm, I'm so used to sort of the uh, Great Battles of American Civil War leading to the CWB stuff in terms of just the overall flavor of the game. And I'm used to the old uh, Blue and the Gray type series, which was a different type of game from both of these. This is really a replacement for the great battles of the American Civil War type of game. And the question comes down to, hey, you know, uh, does it really succeed in both in providing a historical and accurate view, and uh, does it also succeed in being kind of slimmed down? Now, I don't know about the new GBA CW stuff, but uh, I don't know if it's really any slimmer than the old stuff. And I feel like the focus is on something different. The focus is more on the event shits and this kind of more interactive and controlled play of some things and less control over your actual units. Which I think is interesting. There's no question. But it kind of sells itself as being a lighter game. And I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> I feel like I have a lot of little, little rules lookups uh, that because there aren't going to be a lot of other games of this type 
unless this just catches on and sweeps all different genres in a general feel, uh, you're always going to be making in a way that you're not going to be making uh, with the more traditional tactical game designs. Turn starts off, or at least the activations, in a kind of interesting way. Uh, because the dynamics have changed, the Union's basically trying to hold a defensive line o over here and maybe press down here. Well, the most vital thing is to prevent the Confederates from punching through and just destroying that line. So when a Union activation came up for Geary, he tried to do a rally operation. Well, that didn't work. He didn't get the activation. You see, he can't do it again. Uh, but then even more importantly, when I got Banks, um, I chose to try to do to do um, uh, recovery or whatever with Prince uh, rally and recovery. I, I use the words in interchangeably. Recovery is the actual term used in the rule. Rally is the process that it includes, but also defend operations include a rally process. Uh, but the recovery operation uh, worked for Prince because it was from banks. And what's kind of nice is those early draws. I knew I wasn't facing any event chips because. The Confederates hadn't made any draws, so I could safely do that. And this was the most vital. I would have kind of liked to have upgraded Geary with with the recovery, uh, because I know he can't get another chance. But my feeling is Augur, who's the commander of both of these, uh, his replacement is really lousy. He only succeeds on a one or a two, and I figured they're both going to be probably too much engaged in combat very shortly. And that is the case. Archer got a defend operation off, and you can see that allowed him to engage here. There wasn't any firing or anything, he can't do any assault, but the defend allowed him to recover from some of his own morale hits and push his units forward to interfere with the Union being able to rally any further. And that means the things are kind of open in case uh, Thomas, who probably needs to do a recovery himself, wants to attack or pender. We're not going to gain a lot of ground though. This is too thick a Union line to just smash away in the amount of time that we're looking at. We have two turns. One turn is going to be required for Thomas to recover. Pender's going to take a turn to get up there. And attacking in, in the condition that Thomas is in doesn't make a lot of sense. He really does need to recover. And I have a lot of units that need to recover. All of Talafiero has to recover. Uh, the Union pulling back gives me the opportunity to do that. In fact, the Union uh, has taken some recovery already and may be able to push back forward and, and grab a victory point hex because they accumulate. You know, it's not worth a lot of points. It's just a couple of points. but uh, And it kind of has no meaning. Like if you try to figure out, well, why why would this road crossing matter that I hold this for the majority of time? It has no meaning. Uh, it, this battle has very little meaning. <laughs> you know, there's just not much that's going to be done by this battle uh, that's going to affect any kind of strategic outcome. So all you've got is some kind of weird glory type situation going on here. Um, and anyway, that that's about where we are right now. Is with archers move forward. A lot of draws and mostly event chits. Jackson, which I don't have to play right away. Um, Branch marched forward and engaged, but didn't make a, a, a close combat out of it and again a melee. Uh, the Union holding off on things like firefight, which they could use here to try to drive Archer away. Branch. It doesn't really make much sense for them to really use those at this moment because they might clear a space that maybe some other division will march into. So, well, yeah. Uh, and elsewhere, let's see, Trimble pulled back in part because I got to try to cover this and this. I'm probably not going to be able to get this, but this I got to cover. And also, I'm just getting kind of cut off back here. There's so much of Ricketts' uh, division is in place here. Um, I should have said another brigade moves up here, not division. Um, and anything else of excitement? You can see this little routed marker. I ran out of uh, the little morale chits in the game. I don't know if that's particularly me or what, uh, but 
and a little short on the on the counters. You could obviously share a counter between two units or whatever. I just had since I'm using extra counters for the permanent losses, I figured I'd throw all this. Fortunes of War stepped on what? Mm, a rubber fatigue marker, which would have been useful. The funny things about this game, which might be disturbing. I don't know how much to me, but to some people, um, is how often you reach into the cup, draw something out, maybe roll a die, and nothing happens. And then you throw the something back in the cup because all you did was flip one of these. I think that could be kind of uh, uh, a little infuriating after a while for some folk. Anyway, we had a lot of that happening, but we did have some actions. Carol coming down, securing this location, and, well... Knocked uh, an artillery unit back, not this one, I guess. Yeah, this guy back here actually had healthy morale. Uh, it was a bad morale result for the attacker. And likewise, actually, here, Gordon tried to make an attack on Garnett here, just to break things up a little bit. Winder's units, all that's left is Ronald. They just haven't been able to get activations because he's still one uh, in terms of his uh, command activation rating. I, I could use, well, I don't really have anything here except the, uh, except the firefight uh, on the Union side. The Confederates, though, have Jackson available. They also have the possibility of a rebel yell or something. Uh, I'm kind of holding on to that to see if there's somewhere better I can use it. Because there was a possibility that I would get the jump in here. If I would played Jackson, I could have uh, jumped in there. But that's only two victory points. And there are bigger... Well, it's two over possibly two turns if they stay there. Uh, but they, I, I have bigger fish to fry, basically. And much bigger worries. For example, running into here. But you can see Forno did a, re uh, a recovery operation and upgraded some of his units back to full strength. But he's got another recovery needed, or at least a d defend, to get rid of some of these shaken markers. And you can't go marching in on the defend and get rid of the shaken markers. So that's what this is here. I've got another guy who had to rely on bonus counters. It's just a matter of people not wanting to or able to rally. Boy, um... So not a lot more of the... Union, all the activations are done. Confederates have everything that's left uh, at this point, which is really basically, I have a couple of rebel yells, a jacks in action, and a rusty sword to do some rallying with. And, and repositioning if need be. Um, the Union really only managed to get tower over here, but they've got the big victory point space there. That's going to shoot up their score, and the question is what the hell the Confederates can do uh, at this point. Um, and I don't know what. <laughs> a little bit of fire exchange at long range doesn't do anything. It, it can, but, you know, it's like the long range artillery fire. It's just, there's very little chance you're going to have an effect that has uh, uh, a real impact in this, in, in the level of abstraction of this game. Let me see if I can figure out anything useful to do with the Confederates. It's the end of the line. Uh, Forno rallied. Let's see, I think Branch and Early both did assaults with the Rebel Yell. And the Rebel Yell with its couple column shift is pretty potent to tell you the truth. And if you find a place where you have a numerical superiority, uh, Branch attacked over here on the highest column. Early was not able to because uh, his unit got retreated, one of, the, one of the two units that attacked, and the other one got damaged it was only a green result instead of a nice happy red result which is much safer um, and then for the Jackson sword I don't remember what I did I think I rallied a branch unit and moved it forward because what I'm looking at is taking maybe this hex the problem is the valuable hexes are these two I'm never gonna get to this one and this one though I do have some possibility of getting to However, the Union is able to score 
That's the wrong place. Dr. Slaughter's house is nine. This is two. Eleven more points this turn. I don't think there are 50 points for the Confederates to take on the field. That doesn't mean it's over. Um, it's possible there's other points that'll come from the broken box. But those look like they're probably going to accrue also to the Union. Things like Talafiero, who I can't rally. Now, I could use Jackson, the Jackson CIC, to rally Talafiero at the end of the game and get those guys off the out of the box, for example. And that, that's probably what I have to do. Just to reduce the amount that I lose by, I guess. A uh, quick check on fields there. He's not coming in. And we'll push into the last turn after I shove these forward. Okay, as we roll forward, um, here in the 8 p.m., and this is the final turn. Uh, the, conf the artillery fire was actually fairly effective on both sides. You can see the Confederates actually knocked a unit out, which is some victory points for them. There's no way. These guys are all going to be scored. These guys here have a chance of coming back. I do not like big counters for this. They jumble, they, they just don't seem to be as manipulable. <laughs> um, uh, I think this got driven back hard. From here or something, I'm not sure. No, that must have happened earlier. Anyway. Uh, Largely, I think the Union got the better end of the firing this time. If I was the kind of person who was interested in, hey, who won and who lost, and by how much even, uh, we could call this. The Confederates have lost significantly here. Uh, but I'm not that kind of person, so we'll continue on through this. You can skip ahead and get the final count. I can put Hill in the bag, or uh, Fields in the bag here. He can't come in anymore. And otherwise, we're set to rock through whatever this last turn gives us so that we can come to a final score. But we can see already. Uh, did I even score this shit? I guess I did. Um, there's almost no chance of the Confederates knocking the Union out of there. That's another nine points that the Union's going to get. I think there is no chance. And we probably... Uh, just given the odds of things, you're going to get the two points there. Are the Confederates going to get anything? They could maybe make a run up here, or maybe get this, or maybe get that. But there just aren't that many points. So we're looking at, like, you know, at best for the Confederates, something like a 30, 40 point deficit. Which... Do we have any... You know, is easily going to be in the major victory range. So, uh, we could call this without any problem. But, let's keep going. It's not that painful. I'm just, I'm being very slow about playing. And I don't think it's the game. I think it's just me, uh, my mood, the games that I'm playing with my wife. And other things I want to do. Not being, uh, you know, the disassociation completely with BGG is uh, definitely causing an issue there as well. As things begin on this final turn, uh, Crawford went first had a fatigue plate against him, which knocked this unit down a little bit. And he did a recovery or action, got one of his units improved. Could have done to defend it and remove the morale, hit and pull back, I don't know. Not sure which one I like better. I hate having that damaged unit up there in the front. Um, Fortunes of War knocked out the Jackson chip, and then Fog of War Wounded Williams, so now he has a crappy replacement in the ch chit cup. We got a lot of leader casualties here. You can see uh, Williams, Augur, Hill, and Winder are all wounded. Next big actions, uh, Hartstuff made his way up here, busted his way through some Confederate units over here. But perhaps key. He it's covering that Confederate victory hex. Thomas punching forward, not to much effect. I had to take a hill action. I didn't want to do branch because I think I need a quick time so that I can try to assault this or else Forno can go in there or whatever. But right now the position was such that I didn't want to really use that up. 
I don't know what hope I have really. I mean, I kind of feel like I got to bust through here or here or something, and those all look too rough. Uh, or anywhere I can bust through really looks too tough. Maybe my best and easiest victory point is up here. Quite a few uh, command chits went off at one. Uh, Overall, still got a bunch of leaders left in here. Union only has Geary left, but the Confederates have a whole bunch. The Union hasn't done a hell of a lot with its points, although uh, Tower here smashed into, who was this, Tremble's force. Really kind of did some damage. You can see there's a couple more Tremble units down here that have recently been wiped out with some charges. Otherwise, we've just been kind of covering uh, the terrain here. A little bit of repositioning and rallying back here, not much. Uh, I still have banks available and some other counters that might help me, like a firefight. Try to clear the way somewhere. I may just uh, do a firefight on this Trimble unit to try to get it out of the way. That sounds like a good start. Eh, let's roll one. Um, I got nine firing. It's a pretty good roll. 33 says if he's a three or less he's got a problem he's a one uh, might be worse no that's still just a green table check four doesn't cause any depletion one doesn't cause any retreat so now he gets to shoot back he's got cadre strength essentially oh but he gets a good hit oh, one to three doesn't hit him oh, so that you know, the hope was, well, I'd get, I'd score another unit of trembles and get it over here, but that didn't happen. He's got a couple of uh, rebel yells trying to take this hex. They failed to do so. Uh, basically, they had to do a movement through fire. The withdrawal fire finished off the unit that was trying to do that. I don't know where it is, which one it is. That's branch, and I don't see a branch in it. Maybe a, a retreat that took place here. Um, basically the two together was an attempt to get there. Uh, another alternative, this couldn't get me close enough to fight, so I didn't really have any way, even though I had Pender out here, to actually get him to take that hex. But he wasn't going to be able to do a lot, no matter where he was, just set up a defensive line somewhere, really. And for the Union, uh, they used, uh, uh, what's his name, Banks' command. Uh, to charge forward with Carol, or no, I'm sorry, with Hart, uh, Hartbreath. And they knocked out a couple of Confederate artillery. So, we're really at the end here. The Union has a couple more counters. I could have used the Confident to continue charging. I guess I can do that still. I forgot to do that. Um, I can do another close combat, so we'll hit this thing. I got four, well, at first it gets to shoot. It's on the two table. Ooh, it got a big roll. Uh, enough to make the Union make a morale check. Enough to deplete and retreat the Union unit. So, that uh, confident didn't do it. Even with a higher cohesion rating, it wasn't gonna succeed, I don't think. Anyway. Uh, the most I would have done is killed another unit. Now we uh, count up the points. And at end of turn, Union still gets another 11 points here. So we'll put that there. And then we count up what the Confederates are holding, which looks like nothing, to tell you the truth. Because they didn't get this. They didn't get this. They failed here. So they're not going to get any additional points. So now we just count up the strength of other unit of the dead units. So, Confederates 6, 7, 11, we didn't rally Green's units, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, we'll give them the Union those points, and now we count up Union losses, ooh, there's more Confederate losses, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 more. But I didn't count. But now we count up the Union losses. And that's 8, 14, 
and another 14 is 28 so we get them down to 68 but again it's a total blowout I'm not quite sure uh, I mean there's a lot of luck in this scenario so I can't really speak too much about balance uh, I'm not sure that I made any huge errors with the Confederates terribly it's just a matter of at certain points when first of all the Union attack was able to hit here and score some valuable points to these two hexes for quite a while early in the game which isn't even you know historically the period where they were scoring some of those points was a period where the artillery duel was still going on and the Union hadn't advanced uh, which can happen in the game you might not get successful uh, push forward although the Union commanders are good enough that they have a fair chance of doing so and then things just never really went well for the the Confederates even once they had a, a strong amount of force one thing lucky for me I managed to get a bunch of these guys into the uh, onto the board and out of the available box Talafiero got a successful winder has like a one in six chance um, but yeah this was a blowout several turns back you know I mean back around here and here I was already pretty much able to see I don't think the Union's going to get this lodge from the amount of points they, they were able to accumulate. And then scoring the additional points for this a couple of times, that, that was just horrible. You know, but the Confederates had to bring the units down off, uh, off of Slaughter's Mountain in order to fight at all because they had no chance if they didn't grab a couple of these victory point spaces. And seeing that whole, uh, I guess, kind of eastern or northeastern uh, flank just dissolved and I mean Ricketts had a huge force so it's not really too surprising that he was able to brush them aside all right we'll load this up and uh, come back for a review and listen to that lovely rain